So in this video I'm going to show you how to connect an iPad to a HDMI TV or in my case here a HDMI monitor. Now just a few things before I get into this video. First thing is this particular iPad is the new M4 iPad Pro. However what I show you in this video will work for any iPad that has got USB-C on it. So that's going to be like an iPad Air with USB-C, an iPad Pro with USB-C any iPad with USB-C. Unfortunately, this method will not work for any iPad that has got lightning on it. Now, the second thing to mention is that this is going to be the easiest way of connecting your iPad to an external TV or monitor because this just uses a very simple single cable. And what that means is that you cannot power the iPad at the same time. So just to be clear, when you use this method, your iPad will be losing power as you are doing it however I will be doing other videos soon showing the use of Thunderbolt docks USB-C docks and also Thunderbolt and USB-C hubs with an iPad or in this instance the M4 iPad Pro and in that instance you can power the iPad as well so keep its power levels up and also you can be doing things like connecting mice and keyboard physically to the iPad as well as doing it wirelessly of course and also you can connect things such as hard drives and SSD and external kind of ethernet connections and stuff like that so if you're into that type of stuff basically desktop setups and powering the ipad whilst plugging it into a monitor and a tv etc keep an eye on the channel now what i'm using here is a cable by cable creation which is about six foot long on one end it has got usb c and then on the other end it has got hdmi and all we do is simply connect the usb c end of the cable to the usb c port or Thunderbolt port on an iPad and then we just take the other end of the cable which is the HDMI cable and then plug that into an available HDMI port on your TV or your monitor and then once everything is all connected up just make sure that you've got the correct HDMI input selected on your TV or your monitor and then what you're going to get is the iPad being mirrored to your TV or your monitor as you can see this is doing right now so just to be clear if I can just try and show you here there is that USB-C end of the cable there so if I unplug that hold on the monitor should switch off and then if I plug it back in again it might take a few seconds hold on let's see it's taking a bit oh there we go I was gonna say it was taking a bit longer than what I thought it was going to but as we can see it is automatically switched on and the reason why is because the monitor hadn't switched off and it was still selected to the same HDMI input that that cable is connected to anyway as we can see here this is a basic screen mirroring and because of that what we will get as you can see here are black bars on the side of the actual picture so there's a black bar on this side and there's a black bar on that side of the picture now technically these are called pillar boxes and these are the opposite to letter boxes where letter boxing is where you get the black bars top and bottom pillar boxing is where you get the black bars down the sides now the reason why we get that is because all we doing here is doing a screen mirror of the iPad to the TV or the monitor in which case what happens is here the TVs are going to be 16 9 so they're going to be a wider aspect ratio than the iPad so what happens is basically we just get the aspect ratio of the iPad screen and it gets centered into the 16 9 frame of the TV or the monitor just as this one is doing right now anyways what I'm just going to show you here is basic navigation and stuff and just show you that it's all work so let me just pop these out of the way i'm going to turn this round to myself otherwise i'm going to have a bit of a time trying to see that and see what's going on there in fact i can't see what's going on there but you can okay so i'm just messing around with the screen here so twiddling around and stuff and as we can expect to see it is just reflected as i'm doing it on the ipad onto the tv or the monitor now what i'm going to do here let me just see what apps have got open in fact let me go to settings here so there's our settings page for the ipad as we can see i'm controlling the ipad here and everything that i'm doing is being reflected in this mirroring setup here let me just come out of there let me go into something else oh we could go to the disney app as well and go and watch some bob's burgers which is what i'll be doing after this video let's see yeah but basically as you can see i'm just doing everything that i would be doing on the ipad but it's coming out on the monitor unfortunately i can't show it any gameplay here because i'm just still downloading or trying to download grand theft auto san andreas there 
Let's see, let me just see what else is open. Ah, actually here's another thing I'll explain as well. As soon as you connect this cable to the TV or the monitor, it will automatically send the audio as well from the iPad down the HDMI cable. So if I just go to YouTube here, okay, just a quick jump cut here because I just noticed the problem, but I think I've worked out the solution for it. So what happened was I'd already had one of my videos already lined up to play there on the YouTube app. The reason why I'm choosing mine obviously is because I don't want to get into copyright issues playing other people's like videos and audio. Anyways, what happened was when I went to press play there, the screen or the video area in the app went black and it did do on the monitor here as well. Now I've just worked out what causes that bad looks of it. What you should do is launch the app after you've connected the cable. Because what I've just done here is exited the app and then gone back in again and it's all fine now. So just to be clear, I think a lot of things that use video playback need to be launched after you've like, you know, set the cable up and stuff because that's exactly what I've just done now and this is working properly. Anyway, let me just give you an example of this playing and I will then show you like, or let you hear the audio coming out of the, the, uh, the monitor here. Okay, now what I'm going to do quickly is just show you that it is coming out of the monitor, the audio, and not out of the iPad. So let me just see if I can find... Okay, there's the volume control there. So when I mess with the volume control on the monitor, the volume should go down and come back up. Hold on. Erase all content and settings because if we just... Okay, there's the volume right down. Now let me bring the volume back up. Okay, so definitely the audio automatically gets directed down the cable as soon as it is plugged into like the monitor or the TV. Actually, something else just to show you quickly as well. Unfortunately, with the YouTube app, we now get black bars at the top and black bars at the side of the picture. So basically we are getting letterboxing and pillar boxing. So as we can see here on the picture, if I just press play there, let me just lower this down a sec, hold on. So as we can see here with the picture, there's a black bar at the top and there's also a black bar at the bottom. So that's our letterboxing and we still have the black bars at the sides here, which are our pillar boxing. So what that basically means is that even though we've gone full screen with the picture, although the picture is playing back in 16.9, it's 16.9 kind of like inside a letterbox and a pillar boxing and stuff on the actual external display. With Obviously in this instance, it's the monitor, but it would be the same on a TV. Now that is strictly because what's happening is when we go full screen inside the YouTube app here, what's happening is that it's only going full screen within the confines of like the four, three aspect ratio, which is what the iPad is, hence why all the black bars everywhere unfortunately now if you give us a second hopefully this one will work because I've just pre-queued this one up so this is going to be YouTube and this is on the browser so I'm using the Safari browser here for YouTube so let me just try this okay so that is playing I've put the audio down there just so that it doesn't interfere with me talking so let me just go full screen here Unfortunately, it's the same with the browser as well, or at least in Safari. In fact, if you give me one moment. Okay, so I've just queued it up inside Chrome. So as you can see here, I'm just about to launch Chrome. And there we go, there's the video. But unfortunately, same thing. If I go full screen here, we still get the letterboxing and the pillar boxing. So unfortunately, as far as YouTube is concerned for video playback, regardless of whether it's the app or Safari or whether it's in Chrome, we don't get the full 16.9 coming out, which that's probably to be expected. And the main reason why is because at this point, we are actually only in mirroring mode. So the iPad itself, isn't utilizing you know like the full width of the screen area so all that pillar boxing and letter boxing is to be expected however I was thinking it might get around that because certain things even when you're in mirroring mode do actually play out correctly as in full screen so if you give me one moment okay so I've just found something which will play back the video in full screen 16 9 
even though the actual user interface or the UI is still playing back with the pillar boxes as we can clearly see here. And this is LumaFusion. So just quickly, as we can see, we've still got the black bars at the sides, which is the pillar boxing. However, if I just play the video whilst we're inside the normal UI, we will see this video clip play up here. Now this just is something that I've just literally like filmed on the table here with me and in front of it, just so that we've got a video clip to look at. So if I play this, as you can see, that video clip is now playing there. We should see my hand, there we go. My hand comes into the shot. So that video clip is just playing there in like the small preview box inside the app. However, if I go back here, now what I'm going to do is click on full screen preview with inside the app. So I'll just tap on that. And now we've gone full screen there with the video. So if I press play, the video now is going to play back its preview in proper full screen 16.9, as we can clearly see there. So essentially, oh yeah, and by the way, if anybody who's interested, what happens is LumaFusion's interface just stays on the iPad there, but the playback for the preview comes out on its own on the monitor. That's for anybody who's interested in LumaFusion or doing video editing on their iPads. Anyways, what that is showing us is that yes, some apps do indeed utilize the full screen for 16.9 playback of video content. Now, I can't tell you what those apps are because there are thousands and thousands of apps out there that utilize video and I don't know all of them. But as we just seen, unfortunately with YouTube, even within its own app and then within like Chrome browser, and Safari browser, it didn't utilize the full 16.9 output. So unfortunately, when we are doing this straightforward mirroring with the iPads, we will get this problem a lot. Now, there is one way around that, and that is to utilize Stage Manager. But unfortunately, Stage Manager is only available on certain iPads. And within Stage Manager, it does automatically go to 16.9, and the vast majority of the apps do utilize the full 16.9 screen for playback of video as well. However, that is beyond this video, because if we start using Stage Manager, that will basically knock out certain iPads from being able to be used to do it anyways, but also we will have to use a more involved setup, and that would have to be this setup and at least Bluetooth mice and keyboard, because the problem with Stage Manager, you cannot use it effectively without Bluetooth mice and keyboard. In fact, you know what, just whilst I'm here, let me just do something, let me just go into settings here. So if I go into, is it display and brightness, yeah? Then what I'm gonna do, I'll go to arrangement here. Now at the moment, I'll see if I can try and zoom in in like post here. But as you can see, it says mirror display because that's what we're doing right now. However, if I switch over, this is now gonna go into stage manager. So if I'll, cl I'll click set, now suddenly this monitor, there we go. We've got a full 16.9 UI here. And on my iPad, the iPad still has a different screen on it. So if I just come back, sorry, I'm sidetracking here, but I think this might be interesting for some people. So as we can see here, the iPad is still doing its own thing. So the iPad is acting independently at this point in time with its own screen. And then externally here, this is stage manager. However, and as you can guess now, we will need to use a mouse and a keyboard to do Stage Manager. However, I will be doing a video all about how to use Stage Manager with the appropriate mice, keyboard, and interfaces soon. Okay, so that should just about do it for this video, and the video should have been shorter than what it was. However, as I was going through, I just thought, you know what, I'll probably have to mention certain things. It was only because once we started seeing that certain things wouldn't go 16, I just thought there might be some people out there who might be interested in wanting to know what could go 16.9 or indeed that if we use Stage Manager, that is a 16.9 output within itself. And like I've already said, the vast majority of stuff playing within it does go 16.9. However, there are things that don't with Stage Manager, such as games and certain apps don't as well. So there's still a lot of work needs to be done with Stage Manager. However, and like I've just said as well, you know, I've just done that little extension at the end for those people who might have been interested in that little extra bit of information. Anyways, as ever, there will be Amazon links in the video description below to everything that I've used within this video. And also, don't forget to keep an eye on my channel as I start going through all these other things that we can plug into, you know, using our iPad, such as 
Thunderbolt docks, USB-C docks and Thunderbolt and USB-C hubs and all the rest of it because there are a ton of different ways for us to set up iPads on a desktop type setup with external monitoring either TVs or computer monitors with all kinds of things plugged into them as well. Anyways if you found the video useful please do give it a thumbs up, a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome. I'm David Harry, thank you very much for watching this video, take care and goodbye now.